Okay. Uh, seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Wow. Long time. <laughs> Flashback. Five, five o'clock. Five o'clock. Welcome everyone. September sixteenth. Meeting of the board of trustees. Uh, two trustees. One is not available this evening. Um, road superintendent. Road administrator is not available this evening. Uh, fiscal officer is here and the fire chief's here. So, we'll call the meeting to order. I entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of September 4th, 2019. I so move. There's a motion. I'll second that. Uh, any further discussion regarding the minutes? Make one amendment to it. One. I, I, thank you. Did, did you want to uh, ask Margaret anything about that? Nope. Okay. Um, Hearing no further discussion, may we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. I have now entertained a motion to approve payment of bills in the amount of $97,555.11. Ka-ching. Was that a motion? <laughs> okay, I move. Motion. <laughs> motion. I move that we approve payment of bills. All right. I'll second. Uh, it generated from uh, general fund $2,802.13, fire fund $19,510.02, cemetery fund $228.60, EMS billing um, $9,804.80, road and bridge a whopping $61,909.56. And coming in last and least is capital project is zero. Wow, when was the last time the road and bridge fund beat the fire yeah. department? That's not correct. Oh, uh, 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 the, the total is correct, but actually the capital project fund. Okay, wait a minute. One thousand dollars. Remember the right. other one? The other one is not. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had. I had turned three. Anyway, it's one thousand. Is the capital project fund? Okay. So, the uh, road and bridge is this paying the county engineer for fifty-eight thousand dollars in chip and chip seal. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We actually play, pay the contractor directly. directly. Okay. But the county engineer arranged the mm -hmm. pricing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, discussion regarding payment of those bills. Here in the vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Correspondence for the period. Uh, annual report from Star, Ohio. That's a must read. RPCC Executive Committee meeting reminded for tomorrow, uh, an update for the Natural Burial Cemetery Guide. Um, a meeting set up for members of Green County's MBRPC members for October 16th. Or no, I'm sorry, it's going to be on the 23rd. Um, oh, confirmation of that. Uh, solicitation from MBRPC of Fast Act projects, which we don't generally because fast act projects are generally pretty good size uh, road resurfacing projects. Although now that we're coming into more gas tax money, maybe next year we'll have some. Um, a schedule change for the uh, Yellow Springs Comprehensive Land Use Plan Update Steering Committee, uh, which will be held on the 16th of October, the next one. August Bath Township response uh, from uh, um, sent from Colin to uh, Bath Township last. Do you have this in your report? Are you going to go over that? Or? Uh, I can. Okay. Uh, all right, we'll wait for that then. Um, question about uh, condition of Main Hall. Did that get finished totally? Clean that Main Hall at the stair climb? Yes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, they just needed to clean up before they could do the stair climb. And the stair climb's over with. So it got done. Oh, yeah, we got all our stuff out of there because I wouldn't want to upset anyone even that we've you know, cleaned that building for years and taken better care of it than anyone else. But, you know, hey, no bitterness. Right. <laughs> I, I can tell. Uh, copy of uh, uh, it, uh, Bark Economic Sustainability Commission minutes of September from Karen Wintrow. Um, so
some electronic correspondence with uh, Jerry McDonald, the new lawyer for the YSCDC, about the um, Could I see that? bylaws that are being produced. And we should have them to vote on next meeting. Because we can't be a, um, we can't, well, we could, I don't know if we could not. We are, are going to consider designating the new CDC as our designated agent for such projects that we don't have. We don't have to have them, but if you don't designate them, they can't do it, right? So we're making baby steps. Notice from Sprint about our data service. Uh, an invitation to Devin Shoemaker for tomorrow night's uh, um, joint meeting with the Zoning Commission. A uh, response to uh, Gwen Agna about uh, Cemetery question, uh, response to Connie Taylor about uh, closing the line of credit for tomorrow. Uh, we'll probably take that up under Firehouse at least a little bit. Um, a uh, request from a Furniture group for furnishing from the new firehouse. Uh, invitation to uh, groundbreaking to uh, a few people. It's a personal invitation as opposed to a, a blast, an email blast. Um, uh, a commitment to a uh, appraisal, a building appraiser for this building to get a. Um, to get a value that we can go on for putting it on the market. Uh, that'll take a couple, three weeks, probably. Um, nice note from Ed Miriam. <coughs> Take a look at that one. Mm -hmm. It's a $1,300 uh, cost. For that. Uh, a bunch of resolutions back and forth that had to go out from our last meeting, as you recall, because we designated signers and we designated stuff to go out for the West Banco uh, line of credit. Um, the confirmation that uh, we sent the application in for the builder's risk insurance and a response from uh, Otarma that he has uh, sent it off to the traveler insurance company and it's going to cost us. $8,800, I think, for that. We'll have uh, $5 million of, of overall coverage, builder's risk. Uh, then there's a, a couple of specific on-site uh, uh, coverages for damage or loss of a, a construction a material that might be stored and pilfered or whatever happens to it. Nestor is dealing with the, vi the village on the conditional use hearing that's coming up uh, in October. That uh, we'll have a continuation of the conditional use. Pardon me. I'm not sure. Remind me, Nestor. Nestor from MSA. Oh, okay. Lots of messages back and forth about uh, establishing the first Thursday of every month at 11 o'clock um, for our uh, uh, standing meeting for construction of the new, we'll meet, um, I assume we'll meet here, and the uh, contractors will submit uh, invoices. Oh, I guess that's come down. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. 
they may just submit the invoices and then we'll put them on your desk and, and hope they get paid. And they, they hope they get paid. <laughs> I, I, they, we were told some some years ago how that process worked, but I have since forgotten. Right. Um, confirmation that we reduced our contractors from seven to five. Uh, subcontractors basically reduced from seven to five. Strange little turn of events. Two of the contractors could not meet USDA requirements for bonding and insurance, and they, were, they had to be double bonded. No one else gets double bonded, but USDA required to get double bonded, and. Two of them thought that it might take a while to, for them to get the double bonds, so we let them drop out and then included their work in the major J Corp uh, contractor who had, um, who had also bid those two, it was the uh, electrical and the overhead doors, the J Corp had also bid those two as, uh, as alternates. So, so J Corp will now do them, or they will these two companies will be subcontractors under J Corp. That's correct. Second. The same two companies. Okay. Will be subcontracted under J Corp, but we now have to pay seventeen thousand dollars more to J Corp for the privilege of them overseeing the two contractors. And that will still end up being cheaper than if J Corp did it right. No. J Corps bid was seventeen thousand dollars more okay. than the combination of these of the seven, but the two of the seven had to withdraw. They didn't have to, but it just right ran out of just the way to do it. So now you see them now they don't. Um, an inquiry from someone who had hoped to be able to bid on the on the roof by, by itself for the firehouse and they may be able to bid it to J Corps, I don't know. Um, some correspondence back and forth with Peter Hahn, our, our, our contract attorney in, in, in Columbus who is just about to get to work. <laughs> As of maybe uh, 11 o'clock tomorrow, uh, we can talk about where the contracts are. Um, uh, some emails back and forth, copies, I guess some of them are, most of them are, from Don and Home Inc. And hopefully you'll be able to uh, give us a little, a little more light on that in the We talked about the firehouse report. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Any other correspondence in or out for this period? I did put on the table um, a, a lot of information that was submitted by Otarma on loss control information, mm -hmm. different things that they like to see in place to um, you know, cover damages if we get sued for anything or any that kind of stuff to keep us all lined up. Was that in here? I'm sorry. It was right there on the, it was a, it was, it was on the desk, yeah. I mean, I could get uh, it real quick. I'll go look. I got it. I know what I'm looking for. Through briefly, and so because I know a lot of what it is anyway. So let's do it the next meeting. That's okay. Is that the right with you? Yes. A lot of it has to do with the road department anyway, so it's better to hear it. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right, thank you. All right. No further correspondence. We shall move along <coughs> to the fire department report. That'd be you. That'd be me. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Since the last board meeting, what, 13 days ago, mm -hmm. uh, we've had 37 EMS incidents, uh, 28 fire incidents, and have conducted four fire safety inspections. Mm -hmm. 
the man on the Memorial Stair Climb went off well, was it last week? Two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Two Saturdays ago. Um, we had 94 climbers who participated. They raised over $9,000. And with our corporate donors, we've raised just about $20,000. And our top raising team was Team MTFR. Second year in a row. Take that, homie. <laughs> um, so that was great and a good time. Uh, tomorrow night we've got our first conceptual Bath Township mobile open house at Twin Towers Park from 6.30 to 8. So um, we're hoping for a decent crowd. It'll be a nice day, apparently. So we're going to do hot dogs and fire engine rides and do that stuff for the kids and see how that works. We distributed flyers um, in the residential development areas until the Postal Service told us to stop. <laughs> um, and we finished up one of the areas today by just a week. So. <laughs> oh, because they were stuck in the box instead of around the box? Uh, no, you can't even put it around the box. But for years we've been doing, um, like rolling flyers up and putting them between the flag and the box. Because we knew you couldn't put it in the box. But apparently you can't put it anything around the box either. So either a newspaper box, which apparently everyone has, but you can tell no one gets a newspaper anymore because they're all spider webbed over. Um, or you got to go door to door or mail them, which I understand why the post office wants you to do that. But we don't have a mailing list for a bath township, so that would cost a lot more. Anyway, so hopefully between social media and the two big residential areas, someone will show up. Well, Donna and I won't show up, unfortunately. We won't have you or we'll have Steve Ross. So. <laughs> yeah, or Steve. Um, so there's three hot dogs and three ice cream cones. You just go yeah. ahead. I'll cover those for you. All right, okay. I got hot dogs for you, Margaret. Yeah, yeah that's always a problem. I just never know how to eat hot dogs again. But the beauty is that they don't eat them. He's got them. Mm -hmm. well, luckily, two boxes of hot dogs aren't that expensive from uh, that place. GFS. Anyway, so hopefully that'll go well. Um, with that, you have the Bath Township Report for the month of August. Yep. You can see it was a humdinger of a month. We did five calls in that country. Um, we started the year off pretty uh, pretty hot. I think the month of January we had 16 calls, and we thought, oh, God, it's a really nightmare. And then dropped down about nine. The last couple months, we only had about five or six calls. Uh, now, I believe we had six calls in the last three days in that township. <laughs> so it kind of goes in spurts. Um, our total numbers, I think, were maybe around 50 for the year. Um, we definitely got the uh, the better end of the stick because I know Bethel Township's up around 120, yep. and we were pretty sick at 70. So, wow. so again, the biggest area, but the smallest population probably up to 70. So, <coughs> did you remove anybody? Uh, I thought you used to put. Re oh yeah, you did. It was the second page. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can't get the spreadsheets to print out of one page. I got I got to talk to Chief Man Boss. He does this really amazing. Oh, yeah. Drop downs and, yeah. and I just I can barely make Excel work. So but yes, we uh, there were three transports, uh, all to Soin, and then two no removals. Um, and our response time is about total response time is just under nine minutes from getting the call to arriving back to township. So that's pretty good. That's not bad. Um, not not bad at all. So So yeah, there you go. And as far as I know, we haven't we haven't received any complaints. Um, there was a public records request that we received from a resident in Bath Township who was requesting information for another resident um, regarding a call that she had heard that we couldn't take, that we gave it to mutual aid for an unconscious child. I had no record of it, so I called Mindy at Central Dispatch, and she said, oh, that call. Uh, <laughs> it turned out it was in Bethlehem. It wasn't a problem, so that's, that's good. <laughs> yeah, we like that. So. Um, and then uh, the guys, uh, Alex and Justin, were present at a uh, cookout at Antioch. That was wonderful. Last two Sundays ago, uh, assisting a certain trustee with an event that he was organizing his other, under his other hat, one of his other many hats. Uh, it was. And they said they had a good time. And we have I have an interview with a NEX student on Friday who wants to go to the party party. So. Partly because of that or separately? I'll give credit to that, but <laughs> um, I, 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 
it, What's up? It, it, there was a certain, <laughs> this, there were a half dozen local organizations that backed this, uh, either through volunteers or paying for food, uh, just to welcome students. Uh, and, and to have the uh, ambulance pull up and back in next to the old Union building and two firefighters get out and then naturally start being uh, uh, grill masters. Mm -hmm. uh, was, they were the butt of various jokes and comments. Ah, uh -huh. well, good. Very good. <laughs> Friendly. Yes, I should. Yes, I hope so. Because so, we were, uh, subsequently, I think we were up there twice in a row for fire alarms in the dorm. So, <laughs> um, I think that's it. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys, but part time guy, Justin Poteet, uh, was working his last shift on Saturday for us. He'll go down to volunteer. He's um, starting a Dayton Police Academy. Mm -hmm. so, uh, something he was to do one of the. One. Yes, he was one of the Girl masters. Players. Yeah, he's worked with Alex. He works with Alex, so I gotta film that shift. I mean, I think Georgia Go will be taking over, but I've got a couple that she can't do because she's still doing her own job. So, so yeah. So that's I did. It. I did um, have a conversation with uh, a local resident who Justin uh, assisted um, when she needed some help, and she thought he was very nice. So. Okay. She's the one who told me he was leaving. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> He'll a police officer, but anyway, so good for him. That's why he's grown a mustache so he can fit in as a police officer. <laughs> At least that's a reason. <laughs> um, no, he's been a, a great addition to the department. Great attitude, great public relations. So really, it's a shame to see him go, but it's something he's wanted to do for a long time. And, uh, I mean, assuming he makes it to the academy, which I have no reason to think he won't, he'll, he'll be a great addition for the police department. Uh, has a really good head mission. A good philosophy about what policing should be, and I'll do that next week. <laughs> but Dayton's. But if Dayton's police chief does yoga with his recruits, I think he'll probably finish in pretty well. So. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, that is it. Oh, there was a nice letter in the net, Yellow Springs News as well, about um, Chief Carlson and uh, Brett Houseman and Nate Ayers about helping a patient. So mm -hmm. that was very nice to see. So, you know, excuse me, appreciate seeing that kind of stuff. So. And that's it for us. We've been just doing our thing. Uh, Medicaid 2 has been in you know, several times. It's got that hydraulic ride system in the back to keep it smooth. And apparently there's a valve. there are valves that control that. And uh, the valve went bad on the left side, so it developed this RTA lean. Um, and it's fine once you start the ambulance that drives, but it sits in the bay in this lean. So. We had that fixed, and then um, that valve that the company sent to Dave was bad. So I had to go back up, get another valve, and drive this time for free. And it came back, <laughs> the valve from the right side went bad too. So they replaced that one. Uh, Denny called, like all these references, when we decided to put the system in, they were like, oh, we've never had a problem. So apparently we get the bad valves. So hopefully it's all fixed, not, not, you know, not on play with so, uh, you've joined uh, the company of quite a few people who own Lincoln Town Cars from the <laughs> 70s and 80s. <laughs> and uh, the bane of their existence is the self leveling yep. uh, shop drivers. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, maybe, maybe Lincoln is making <laughs> it. could be. <laughs> it be for Hydraulic Spring or whatever the company is called. So, hopefully, it's fixed. Um, of course, the first time we had the problem. The parts had just gone out of warranty. Of course, of course. Um, but the second, and third time being, was like, look, you need to send us these to birth for free because something's wrong. And he said the company didn't give him any, uh, any equipment about that. So that's all extra hands. Did you happen to do the two um, agri tourism fire marshal inspections? Um, you said you were going to do? Yes, I so we talked with Nate about that, and I, he wasn't on today, so I'm going to figure out where he was working for that. So I think he was, we were going to do it on Thursday when he's back on the shift. Because okay. he's never done one, so it was a good thing for him to go out and take a look at it. But there's, what's the other one? Clementine. Oh, Clementine, right. I was thinking about that. I have no idea what they use those barns for. Uh, 
where are you with your social media policy update and training class, potential training class? Uh, I just need to schedule the time with Jerry. Mm -hmm. um, it was a little hectic last couple weeks, but I reviewed his review, mm -hmm. and it makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. So he wants to do a couple classes. Um, I think if we do two, we'll probably be able to get most everybody in. Mm -hmm. And everyone else can just read it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sure. sign off on it. Um, yeah, the changes weren't significant, which is good. Mm -hmm. Whoever we stole that policy from initially did a good job. Um, but the ones he's added do make a lot of sense to reference people to other policies. And that kind of mm -hmm. thing, so. Um, so I will, I emailed him tonight, well, this today. I told him that uh, we would get with an email and that. So no problem. I'm on your schedule. Mm -hmm. It's good. But he's on the tanker, so I guess he could be on the schedule for a too. But we'll try to get that the training is done maybe this month. Or well, I guess we're learning out this month. So um, just to confirm between you and, and Margaret, did this did the SAM renewal get done? I'm doing that tomorrow. Okay. I just got it from actually from the federal government, not from the contractor. So I usually wait till I get it from actually from Sam themselves. Yeah. Because the federal, the contractor ones, those initial ones we've received like seven months ago. But what I've learned is they're the ones that always direct you to pay 300 bucks to renew it. Mm -hmm. And Sam, it's three steps and it's free. So. What is this? Yeah. Nice. I don't know yeah, we doing. spent like $600 the first two times prior to this whole fire station thing, but just because of grants. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered, oh wait, you can do it for free through SAM directly. And right. for a lot less. I don't Sam, know what we're talking about. SAM is uh, the system for awards management. It's a federal system designed to make everything easier, though I don't think it does. That if you apply for grants or receive any federal money, you have to be registered in this SAM system. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to do it every year. And it's just, it's a number, basically. Mm -hmm. And that way, US, in this, Current situation, USDA is happy to give us money, or they can give us money. And then when we apply for federal grants or FEMA aid, you have to have that number so that they, they know that you're already, I guess, accredited through the federal system mm -hmm. and they don't make you reapply, which is nice. So it has streamlined grant applications because you kind of eliminate 800 pages of federal mm -hmm. paperwork. So. And at least for this, once uh, the SAM thing comes through, it's, it's a breeze thing and it's free you now. That <laughs> no, I know that. So. It was kind of shocking when I did it last year through the SAM system for the first time for free. And I thought they were these contractors have the gall to charge you three hundred dollars for something that I answered in five clicks. I guess that's capitalism. I don't know who's been sending sending us emails, but we seem to get them on a daily basis. Yeah, it's typically <laughs> emergency their, registration notice, yeah, re-registration, whatever it is. There are contractors, and they always have a name that sounds like the government, so it's federal something. Mm -hmm. We get it with our radio licenses when they expire every 10 years. And you think, oh, God, it's the F you know, not the FDA, FCC. Mm -hmm. And then finally, you get a notice from the FCC you know, a month before. And basically, all you have to do is sign it, unless you're making any changes. But if you pay these guys, they'll do it. Oh, yeah, we'll do that for 300 bucks for you. So um, the last time we had to do something, we paid PNR communications because we changed it when we switched to marks. Mm -hmm. And that was a that was a three hundred page application. So we, paid, we were happy to pay PNR hundred bucks to take care of it for us. So. But I'll take care. Of, Sam's on my list for tomorrow, so I'll do my three or four clicks, and we'll be good for another year. Okay. Um, Don, I'm going to bring this up to uh, speed on where we are on using our uh, friend and neighborhood. There's no substantive change. It's not clear to me whether we'll, we'll be able to get an answer until uh, Emily is back. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that not, should quite, be not quite two weeks from now. That should be fine. Uh, but that is, uh, we're asking homing if we could uh, put dirt on the neighboring lot. Two concerns are uh, liability and uh, relations with neighbors. Who's been parking there? I've passed, sometimes I've driven by and that parking area is full. The 
uh, Friends Care Center, Center had uh, on a couple different days they had parking lots re oh, okay. Oh, I figured it was yeah. And today there were big semis full of roofing material. I think they were taking them across the street, but they were roofing part of it. Mm. Yeah, they were roofing. Or at least the, the nursing home part. Mm. Was there, uh, the buildings, but. Oh, I think has re resubmitted plans too for the building. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a you know, conditional use. Mm -hmm. They did a little bit of a change in draft before so it's all right. So we, I, I haven't gotten the information and I'm asked about insurance. Would our liability, construction liability insurance? Or, uh, no, we would actually not be involved with it at all. Mm -hmm. It's the responsibility of JCOR mm -hmm. to find, negotiate, you know, any off-site location. So, um, once we get a, a positive, you know, a commitment from from Home Inc., we'll give their information to the JCOR people, okay. which we will meet this coming Wednesday at the pre pre con meeting at nine thirty. What is the well, morning? I'll I'll email Brittany. Uh, who's also on home and and just. Touch base, find out if there's any, any new mm -hmm. wrinkle. Okay. So, but that'll be out of our hands, which is nice, and it will be in professional hands, which is nicer, you know, mm -hmm. because this is what they do on every every project, or probably most every project. Um, so, no, no. But it would be anymore. nice if we could help grease the situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speed up the communication. All right. So. That's leading us into your firehouse stuff. I guess the main one is um, we are working our way through contracts. Um, this multiple, multiple stage business of the contracts is just, uh, I realize it's not uh, brain surgery, but it just seems to be very confusing. But so far, two contracts are finished. Uh, one, and then they're not finished. One is with the uh, general contractor, uh, the JCAR construction, and the other one is with uh, um, I'm just not going to be able to pull it up. Faisal, Faisal construction, but they will be doing the site work. Um, of course, that's basically the first thing we need to have done, and JCAR will be doing the. The borings for the for the geo peers, um, whether they do it themselves or, or they contract with the geo peers, I'm not sure. But there there are two companies that are um, qualified to do that. Geo uh, geo peers and another one I can't think of. But anyway, so those are the two we would like to have, you know, set up first. So MSA has finished getting all the contract forms, all the required forms, on. and while most of it's USDA forms, um, if you saw at our last mo uh, group meeting, there was uh, there was a whole printout of required, you know, who, who was required to do what, and which forms and which bonds and which bid packages, etc. But two of them are complete from MSA. They will be here tomorrow morning. Um, Jason's going to bring them to us. And then it's a little confusing. We either <laughs> we either have to um, electronically send them to our lawyer Peter Han, and I'm sure he has no problem because everything we've sent to him so far was electronic submissions. And then once he's done reviewing them, they go to USDA for final approval, and that's the one we don't know whether they, it has to be in the original form or it can be done electronically, but it's gonna take Peter a couple of days to go over the, the contracts just to make sure. There's really very little that, that, that he needs to, to really review. It's just, you know, is this form there? Is that form there? He's just confirming that what's required. And the original forms are USDA forms. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And then he signs off on those. Oh, we sign off on them first when they come here tomorrow. Then it goes to him and gets signed off on it. And then it goes to the USDA, Mike Davis in Columbus for the final signature and authorization. And once that's done, and we're hoping it's done on Wednesday, I can't believe they're going to turn all this over for that fast, but who knows? It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. It would just look good. Um, you then can um, officially award the contract, and then they start moving equipment on site. Wow. It's just so much back and forth. It's just, and then it has to, of course, there has to be five sets of all five contracts because everybody's got to get one. We got to get one. USD's got to get one. The architect's got to get one. Uh, the contractor's got to ha have one. So there's got to be five total sets that have to be uh, of the five different contractors down from seven. So anyway, that's 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 being done, and it's being done by people who know <laughs> who gets what and when, and it's not been left to, not been left up. Left up. Um, I think I said the yeah the builder's risk policy is is in process, so that's good. Uh, well, let's turn to the groundbreaking on Wednesday, just for a while, and review. To do list. Uh, this is everybody's to do list. Okay. So, as we talked about, I think everybody's in agreement on, on how we're going to set set the, the ground up with the equipment in the background. Uh, five um, uh, members of the department on either side of the E35 digger that Colin will be in, uh, and then <laughs> and then in, in front of the, the bucket uh, will be, the, a, a lectern will be set up, and there'll be a PA system there, and then... Did you get a battery PA system? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not here yet, but Alex or somebody's going to pick it up Wednesday morning in Center Can we get a Tuesday afternoon, or is it just like a single day? I think it's the same thing. We call that. I don't know. Um, and then Young's Moo Truck. I don't know what the name is. Oh, it's Young's on the Go. Oh, That's the name of the thing. Will be to the left on kind of an angle, looking at. <laughs> you with us? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, will be kind of an angle, and then on either side of its window, his service the service window. Do we have two easels? Okay. I know we have one. Yeah. But I know we have one. I was, I was asking about, yeah. Okay, well, we're going to put these two perspective drawings on either side of the, the, the service windows so people will be able to see that. No, I wouldn't say. Well, no, I mean, I. <laughs> yeah, 2500 bucks or something. You could use the one that's. Short. Oh, I guess, yeah. You could use the one that's there now. Just lay out the, the monitors. <laughs> yeah. I'll see, that's the problem with the monitors. Okay, so then, then they'll be there, and then we're going to have we're going to take all these tables and all the chairs. Uh, it's going to be a nice day. It's going to be sunny. It's going to be ninety degrees. Um, the sun is going to be in the crowd's eyes. That's they're going to be looking into the sun. We are going to be looking away from the sun. Yeah. You want us to set up our pop up over the electric the button? That's right there. That right there. Now, who is the crowd? How much publicity? I've sent out uh, 90 invitations. Shazam. How many did you send out in your blast? Not nearly that many. <laughs> uh, 20, 22. Um, okay. Oh, we put it up on Facebook. Oh, I put it on my Facebook page. And it's it it was was paper. Nice. It was a nice thing um, on the paper. So it could be anywhere from 20 to 2,000. 7,000. <laughs> I'm thinking closer to 20. 20. <laughs> I've got like 10 guys going so far. but. Okay. Even though most of my people don't live in Yellow Springs anymore, they have this—they've adopted that very Yellow Springs, like wait to the last minute uh -huh. to tell you a chief who's have already has 17 ulcers. <laughs> What's one more? Wonder where they got. Wonder where they got that. 
All right, so the, the easels will be set up there, and the, t the tables, and, and there are 49, 45 plus chairs around if necessary, and so we'll, we'll, put, those, we'll put those around. Uh, and the reason the tables are because we're, we're going to pr be providing uh, cups of ice cream and bottled water if they want. But that's all. We're not, we're not using their food thing. Yeah, we, need to, we, need, to move, yeah, we need to move people through, you know, if we have some long line. Well, let me have six cheese curds and a, you know, and a chili fries and whatever, you know. <laughs> but it's free ice cream, right? Yes, it, it, it's complimentary. It's free ice cream. <laughs> free ice cream. Uh, not free for us, but free. Um, oh, yeah. for the, um, and so, the, the, the big bell rings at 11. Oh, and we'll have two sets of balloons on either side of the pipes. <laughs> Basically, that's where I was thinking of them. Oh, okay. Well, that's easy. <laughs> you will know where to put them. Well, you can find them. And those are funded by the Firefighters Association. Yes, funded by the Firefighters Association. Thank you very much to them. Um, and then... Um, we're going to need a couple of trash containers lined uh, to okay. be provided by the fire department. Do that. Good. And I've got some napkins or paper towels because at 90 degrees, there could be some sticky fingers out there. It's going to go the best. Uh -huh. That's a good idea. Not, not, not a lot of clock that works. Half of them, about 100. The more the, the more the better, probably. Okay, so the plan for the uh, app, or the morning is um, um, Don and I will start out at the podium, and you're welcome to say whatever you'd like to say. Are you sure? A, a long, <laughs> a, a nice long speech. If you have, you know. A, Lots of words of wisdom Mine that you like very to, brief. That you very to do brief. Um, and I'll introduce the president of the, of the chairperson. Chairperson, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Right? You're not allowed to call, be called the president anymore. Right. Um, could we flip that and I will introduce you just because sure. I, I want to. That's fine. I want to call out three people on how we actually got the grounds no, it before makes, we get to the building. It makes sense that you start out. Okay. Uh, we're going uh, to recognize uh, Karen Wintrow, Tom Kugler, who will be in attendance. Uh, and I've offered them the opportunity to speak if they like. I don't know if they will. I'm sure I'm sure Tom will. Uh, <laughs> and I'm sure Karen will now that I think about it. Um, and uh, the uh, former attorney general who helped out also. Um, but. The, He's not going to attend. Oh, unless I tell him. Right now. Who's but the, who's the former attorney? Yeah. The, the current governor. Okay. Um, Is Malta have any stake in this? Malta's at a ten. Okay. He flies back from British Columbia that day. That's going. Well, that's going too far. It's going back. It's going way back to where there was the committee for the for the acquisition of the property and there were 20 people on the committee like seven years ago <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay and <clears throat> now i i just extended an invite to malta and pam and uh, richard and maureen well Lisa goldberg mm -hmm. um that's good enough I malta's just, on vacation yeah and I don't know and but he certainly tried way back when, when to yes oh yeah get the right state moving yeah can we invite that world traveler guy from right state <laughs> Double bowler. <laughs> Don't get you double bowler. Ever again. Um, I don't know. Did you contact uh, the mayor directly? I know you said you sent her something. Um, yes, the mayor, Pamela, just double check. I'm pretty sure she said she would be there. She's everywhere. She's everywhere. I don't it's on her calendar, and she'll definitely be there. Okay. Make sure this is that. Yes. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, we just you know you always need to acknowledge the mayor. But yeah. and then council members. Uh, <coughs> I know Brian can't be there. He's out of town. Okay. I sent it to Judy. Uh -huh. I asked her to send it out to them. So um, I don't know who's coming for that. Mm -hmm. Judy. <laughs> anyway, you're going to acknowledge P 
people. Right. Uh, just just a couple, uh, just to begin with. And once once I've done that, then you know I will turn I'll, I'll, over to I'll you just, for. It'll be brief. Okay. And then. Uh, it, it, The, the 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 next is Colin. I think should introduce Nestor. Uh, Colin, you can say whatever you want, as long as you want. Uh, acknowledge the fire fires association and Nate, the whole crew. However you want to do that, but that's your time. Mm -hmm. So use it wisely, and then <laughs> and then in, then introduce Nestor okay. and ask him to come up and eat. He indicated he wanted to say a couple things. I hope he tells a story about the time frame dropping his daughter off for college and Oh yeah. <laughs> that she's, and got she's, she's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's got she's got two in high school. Uh, and, and then um, we'll talk about it probably in the morning if not. But I would Chris Widener, I offered Chris the opportunity to speak and he declined. Um, but I was hoping that perhaps it'll work out that you, after Nestor speaks, you could then um, introduce Chris. And I would like I would like him if there are because we're having the pre-construction meeting in the morning. I don't know if any of these construction people, any of the five contractors, might still be there at the groundbreaking. If they were, I would like Chris just to acknowledge yeah. them. Okay. Yeah, this is you know who's going to do the electrical, this is going to do the plumbing, you know what this that take. You know, 30 seconds or something, but, uh, <coughs> and then, go ahead. Is there <coughs> going to be three copies typed up of this quiet agenda so that, I mean, I've been at events where at the last minute, someone forgets something. Sure. Yeah, we can do that. Um, and then, Colin is going to turn this back to you to introduce Ashley. And Ashley's guest, the, the state mucky muck. Yes. Um, on Sunday Purdue. On that Sunday Purdue. And no, no David. Uh, Ashley's boss? Yeah. Ashley's boss. Not Mike Davis. Apparently he's not coming. Or, or if Mike's coming, he's not speaking, but apparently the other person is going to speak. Okay, so I introduced Nestor. Nestor says your spiel. I point out Chris Widener, and if the other people are there, he can introduce them, and then I turn over to Don. You say Mike Davis, how about Dave Hall? That is the guy. Okay. Mike Davis and Dave Hall. Um, yes. He, Dave Hall's not going to be there. Dave Hall is going to be there. Oh, he is there. Mike Davis I, I, I love Dave Hall. Mike Davis is the sailor. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> hopefully he's back there reviewing the contracts and <laughs> <laughs> approving them. Um, <laughs> That's why he can't make it. Okay, and then last but not least, as they say, Donald J. Trump, President of the United States, <laughs> probably. Not. Um, all right, who's got the who's got the microphone? You you do. He's the microphone. Yeah, they, he says his thing and gives it back to you. And I get it again and introduce our secret weapon. <laughs> Wait, uh, isn't that incestuous conflict of interest for you to make the introduction? Of our secret weapon? Yeah. What is our secret weapon? Uh, Connie Taylor's our secret weapon. Oh. I wasn't sure. It should have been. <laughs> well, I, was, I didn't know I had that kind of relationship. Never mind. <laughs> I was thinking of something else. I mean, I she like her at all. The camera. <laughs> this is the culmination of 10 years of work, so to get silly is not. At the very <laughs> least. <laughs> okay, so, um, so I, did, I introduced Connie uh, as the only person I know who I can. Walk in the door and say, You happen to have $350,000 you've let me unsecured, no collateral, just kind of on a handshake. And she said, Sure. So I said, That's a secret weapon. Okay, um, I misunderstood you. I thought you were talking about our star. And there. So then at that time, as soon as, and I, I think she's going to say a couple of things, but I don't think Connie speaks a whole lot of it. Um, after that, then you, know, you thought I was joking. What, end, what are the possibilities of, of getting those engines to spray water overhead? Not into the crowd. <laughs> we don't have any of those, do we? 
Conventions that do that? Yeah, we've got the big thing of ours. Oh. Um, Probably feel good. But in the yeah, crowd, no. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, just don't. Um, it's entirely possible. <coughs> Alright, we'll think about it. I'll have to see when you just don't make a mistake. mistake. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. It would be great if we could synchronize that because I've made a couple of calls to write Pat and we may be getting F-35 flyovers and, and B-1 bombers and B-52s. Yeah, right. And there is one YouTube spy plane that's still in service, and they said they could probably get it out of the right, museum so and, and get it over. Eleven o'clock at night after a couple of hours. Oh, but at ninety thousand feet, we might not be able to see it. I might be able to get careful to fly over if you'd like that. That'd be cool too. Call me maybe tomorrow and see what you can do about Jim Hammer. Uh, oh, careful! I didn't do Hammer. They could dogfight him. <laughs> okay, seriously. So, but actually, I will. We're not. We're not going to do two planes. So no, rather. Right. Well. You just never know on these things. Maybe right. helicopter. Or maybe. They love that kind of stuff. Yeah, they do. Um, the only other thing I was thinking of is uh, parking for the crowds. Um, should we just park everywhere? Every, park them everywhere with it? Well, they will. Where they will get a car wash in the event the, 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 the uh, our equipment sprays. We can park them on the where everyone was parking for friends. Yeah, yeah, that should be fun with that. Now that will be a visual backdrop. That'll be behind. Pretty far away. Yeah, the trucks will be behind the, the lectern and stuff, and we'll have to, given how busy we've been recently, I'll probably have to pull one of the ambulances out and just leave it on the street in case we get a call. Because I'm be You're killing my. Well, just the ambulance. Send the trees and I'll be or something. Well, they could if you want. Well, it was it was two engines, two medics, and then a right truck and a rescue truck. Oh well, yeah, we don't gotta go on a call. <laughs> There's no calls. Yeah, I'm holding calls. Yeah, hold that call. <laughs> we call carefully. <laughs> no hard calls for us doing that. Well, you can leave enough space to back out gently. <laughs> I'll see what I'll see what we can do. I'll run out there tomorrow. We'll do a dry run. But actually, that would add to the drama. Yeah. yeah, lights and sirens. <laughs> well, if care comes, we could have somebody put on a, a gurney and just load them up. <clears throat> I think we're having too much fun. <laughs> well, is there such thing as too much fun? All right. Is there anybody else you would like to invite and have speak? No. We have approximately 45 minutes worth of... Uh, Speakers, it seems. Yeah. And, it's a uh, lot. It is a lot. But then we, we got to leave. <laughs> we got nothing else to do except. When are we? Shoveling is after all the speeches, right? Right. Shoveling is after the speeches. Shoveling and then a big dig. Right. Mm -hmm. We'll move. We'll move the lectern and the PA mm -hmm. off to the side. Um, say, gentlemen, grab your shovels or something like that. Ladies and gentlemen, whoever else we got there. Okay. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> then we'll have our ceremonial. Shoveling, shoveling. The ground's gonna be really hard. It is gonna be really hard. Yeah, well, you could soften it up. The, yeah. Dan already Brother did. Tiller. Well, Dan did. did, but he softened up five five shovels worth, not ten shovels. Oh, so. dear! We'll have to have our strongest volunteers on the one side. <laughs> and, okay, so is there anyone else you would like to invite and have speak? Not that big Is there any. We got a big list for the, the eventual. Ribbon cut. Oh, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. That's why you got the Class A uniforms. That'll be a formal affair. You yeah. guys don't have to wear your tuxedos. Yeah, I know. Your green money tuxedos. <laughs> it's, it's being sewn as we speak. <laughs> um, okay, is there anything that bothers you about the sequence of events? Um, what's going to be there? Who's going to be there? Balloons, uh -huh. ice cream. Support balloons and ice cream. I'm not going to release the balloons. No, we can't do that. I've, I've seen that's bad. No, you don't know, release. Really, yeah. Those turtles, they need to live. Okay. Proud of them. So, we're good with that? Sure. All right. Appreciate your work on that. No problem. Um, yes, thank you very much. You're very welcome. I'm excited. Can I kind of have sleep the night before I go? Oh, sure. <laughs> do you think Sally Purdue's going to come for the uh, ribbon cut? 
If he's still in Elvis? Yeah, if he's still in Elvis, sure. Okay, so other than the, the, the plan that we've talked about of, this is moving forward, of having this building <coughs> appraised, having an environmental site review done, having discussions with, uh, uh, it's going to be probably a bunch of folks like the Yellow Springs Foundation, uh, local banks, uh, this, uh, the CDC, which we have met and discussed the possibility of the CDC acquiring this building, and the members who were at the meeting were all in favor of it, mm -hmm. of exploring that possibility. Um, you know, we talked about it in our last meeting, and, and we were in favor of exploring that possibility. So uh, we'll spend a couple of months, I guess, hoping to firm up, you know, the, the quote deal and, and uh, get it done. So then after the first of the year, hopefully we can uh, uh, make that transfer and uh, assist with their marketing of that. So uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, I think that's about it. I know the contractors, if I haven't said this, the contractors have talked about moving equipment onto the site by the uh, end of September, the ground moving equipment, and, and beginning to move uh, dirt off the site uh, or off the topsoil um, within a week or 10 days of the equipment getting there. And then boring. Uh, that would take about a week, and then the, the uh, geo period boring would start after that. So then you're still in, in mid October. Uh, that doesn't take very long, according to somebody. And then, you know, you have the foundations and all the rest of those good things. So lots of stuff coming up to look forward to. All right, anything else for the uh, new virus? Cemetery and road, we have uh, two things to address. One is the annual report of the roads. Um, shall we do this by resolution and then... Uh, yes, that there, yeah, they asked and then, to do that, so... Is there a time? And you mean a number? Yeah. 2019-35. Okay, a, a time they want this return by? Oh, uh, mid-November. You don't okay. have to do it tonight. I mean, but, you know, why not? It's our 20 year. And, and Dan needs to go over. You want Dan to look at this before you submit it then? If you want to wait till Dan comes back. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we could that go through sense. every one of these and, you know, Put the conditions right. in. Oh, oh, you mean the condition remarks? Condition remarks, remarks like, cost, labor, rest, and materials. Yeah, well, well, yeah uh, Dan can do that, but you can uh, you can adopt yeah, uh, it if you want. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All who, right. who identifies the road number? Is that the county engineer's yes. classification? Yeah. Um, it may be Ohio. It might be the Ohio Department of Transportation okay. also. So we have before us uh, annual report township roads, which is going to be resolution 2019-35. Mm -hmm. I, I thought we had 35 last month. That just sticks in my mind for some reason. We 30, argued back and forth, 34 and 35. Okay, we did. Yeah, let me go quick check real quick. This actually says 36 annual report township roads. Oh, that's yeah, that's your, what yeah, that's that's what I meant. On your agenda. Yeah, because I think. <laughs> well, then that doesn't conflict with my memory. It's 35 that would have. That and that's correct. It is 36. I spoke incorrectly, but it is 36. Correct. As it says, yeah. Are you moving? Well, but there's nothing in here yet. No, no it's just basically this is the um, the amount, the mileage is. 
Okay. The most important part. Yeah. If you look on the on the on the back, the amount of oh, 14, 633, That's that's the that's the same amount. I move with adoption it. of resolution 2019-36, the Thank annual you. report of our 14.633 miles of road. Mm -hmm. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Can you nominate a vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. I saw you signing that. Do you want me to sign? Uh, oh, yeah. But I think you're going to sign the original first. Mm -hmm. You have the original of the Clifton? Yep. Okay. So I'm both of those two, and then we can keep one and move one on. <clears throat> okay, so we also have before us a contract between the Village of Clifton and Miami Township for snow removal and street and sign repair for uh, the year ending December 31, 2019. Apparently, we overlooked this at the beginning of the year. Yes, apparently, we did. Apparently, we did. It's uh, the exact same as what we um, had last year. We used to have a much simpler yes, we contract, did. but uh, the village solicitor for the village of Clifton, whoever that is, is added, okay. more, added more words. Yes, there were more words. <laughs> I'd entertain a motion to uh, enter into this contract between Clifton and Miami Township for snow removal and street sign repair as specified in the document before us, which is the same document that we uh, had last year. I so move. We have a motion. Do a second? Oh, I'll second. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Mutcher. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Are, are these both originals? Yeah, if you could just sign both of them and I'll and we'll keep one and send them along. You sign first and then I'll sign so we don't take the wrong line. No wrong line. Uh, remind me the rough total of what we were paid by them last year when we billed by the hour. Mm -hmm. It is fifty dollars an hour. I, I don't know. Fifty dollars plus plus material. Plus material. It, it runs out roughly fifteen hundred, depending upon so how much. Long. Well, the snow is fairly consistent with it. it depends upon the street repair. You know, if we did a culvert or two, or um, I don't they have. Seem to have lower standards than we have on our real roads. I mean, because we depend on them calling and saying we want this filled, correct? Yes. Well, when you've got a, you know, when you've got an operating budget of thirty thousand, I think. <laughs> yeah, for the whole whole year, you can't be real generous with your. Spread it around. Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Contract plan, we couldn't we just did all that. Uh, just want to let you know, because we did sign the check for it, all our all our road chip seal has been completed. Uh, Harbison, Larkin, is and Tannard. And there are a couple of roads that need to be fogged before the end of the year. And hopefully they will get to it. They seem to always take forever to fog roads, but it's all right. As long as they do it. Um, it's kind of interesting that Dan was talking about, he says, he said they did a, a real nice job on the chip seal, which is just fine. Comment. He says they didn't use as much. They didn't use as much stone as they do in, in past years. And well, that's good because then the, you know the, the bike people don't complain so much, and, and cars don't tend to slide off the side of the road and, and that sort of stuff. Although uh, I did go through the roads yesterday afternoon, which is like a week after the chip seal, and you can already start to see tar coming, you know, tar lines coming up through the surface. And usually when they put a decent chunk of stone down on there, you don't see it until it gets pushed down after a while. So 
who knows how long that's going <laughs> to last. But next year, they, all of those will be fog, so maybe that will help. I just thought I'd mention that. Okay, anything else for the cemetery? Then uh, We do have a natural burial scheduled for tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. Um, Brandon is, um, no, Wednesday afternoon at 2 o'clock, I'm sorry. Um, Brandon is prepared to do that. I'm going to offer to help if he wants it. Somebody local? No, I don't think so. <coughs> um, and it brings up something that we may end up uh, discussing further as time goes on, but uh, this burial is, um, I believe, 12 days after the, uh, uh, the, the death of the internee. And our regulations state that there is a, a maximum of a three day uh, period. This is, this is what we just have adopted as our standard. Mm -hmm. It's not state yeah. law. Or right. Anything. It's just what we've adopted. Um, so we have had people, um, funeral homes, push us on the time. Um, actually, the one, the one burial, natural burial, the, the week prior to this one, which I think we could go. Um, was I think seven or eight days after the uh, after the passing. So it's you know we, we may want to bring it up when the cemetery sex committee gets back because those are the people that are doing the work and those are the people who are uh, most affected by the length of time from the uh, from the death to the burial. So. Uh, <coughs> refrigerator mm -hmm. and it, those are used in in these cases um, but un unless you're actually freezing you know then there is still decay yeah and uh, he Dan was fairly upset about one not being here for this and two having uh, Brandon have to deal with a uh, For what little benefit it's going to be, they they waited the 12 days because they couldn't get a casket that they wanted right away, and it was least, a natural burial, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought caskets were part of the deal. You no, know, you can use caskets as long as they're they're all natural, and mm. there, there are all natural caskets available mm. in the market. Um, but it, 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 at least that will give some more containment. Hmm. Well, so anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. we so there. This is you're saying at some point we should review our rules. Yeah, review them or or be more mandatory as to you know. I'm sorry, but this is just the way it is. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Anything else for the Sunday in the road? Yeah. How about the fist gloss? What has she been up to? Uh -huh. Okay. What? So anyone can talk uh, I whipped out a little bit of a little resolution here. Okay. 2019-37, uh, amendment of a permanent appropriations. Whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now therefore the trustees authorize an amendment to the following permanent appropriations and the fire fund. Increased training services by $1,000 and increased water and sewer by $350. And an EMS building also increased um, training by $400. That's, that's resolution 2019 37. Yep. Is there a motion to approve that resolution? I shall move. I will second. Any further discussion regarding adoption of resolution 2019 37? <coughs> Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. And sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, 
Zoning inspector, no Mr. Zop. Moment. Check in with him. Our right, next meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, standing committee reports. Nice. I noticed that MVRPC seems to be <laughs> on vacation. <laughs> well, the TAC definitely is. Hold the phone. Give me one second. I made a report and everything. <clears throat> RPC meeting. Um, we recommended uh, changes in a um, bunch of different transportation pr uh, uh, programs, the, the CMAC uh, projects, the, the transportation improvement projects, um, the Fast Act Fund projects uh, for 2020-21. Sure. Um, had an interesting information item MBRPC is taking on a new responsibility uh, funded by the Dayton Foundation. It's, uh, it's, a, it's going to be a disaster recovery assistance project uh, program that will be coordinated by MBRPC. They're going to hire a, a, a director for that and put together a, a plan uh, that uh, of as disasters come in and different levels of disasters, uh, who's responsible for for doing what. Um, and I can provide that if everybody's interested. Isn't that kind so. of leading in the world of transportation? Or, mm -hmm. I guess, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, I guess, the, uh, never mind, go ahead. Um, I guess it seems like they, you know, MVRPC is about ready to do anything. <laughs> do they have any limits on their no, not really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if they have funding, and that's yeah. if they have a region that's kind of open ended. Then, okay. Yeah. Uh, if, if they can get it funded and if they can find the personnel uh, mm -hmm. and have the space there. And, and you're absolutely right. It has been, you know, pretty much transportation planning for years. For years. Yeah. And uh, that's this, what this executive director has just, you know, decided that there are more things out there that uh, could benefit from the, uh, the work that they do yeah. on a regional on a regional basis. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was the uh, Green County regional planning and there wasn't a whole lot going on there. It was just regular vouchers and subdivision reviews and quarterly audits and um, um, they're, they're starting to work on, they, we are starting to work on putting together the basics of the review of the county's uh, long-term comprehensive land use plan. And they had a, uh, uh, a contribution, I don't know if we call it a contribution, from the Green County Commissioners of, of $50,000 towards that process. Um, so it basically works out that uh, it's going to be just a little under $100,000 to have that review done. The, the county is going to contribute Fifty thousand. Uh, the in kind, the in kind work contributed by regional planning is about twenty five thousand. I got these numbers exactly right. And MBRPC is contributing approximately forty seven thousand dollars worth of uh, contribution, planning contribution to the project. So, wait, MBRPC mm -hmm. is, is giving us to green county. PC. For a transportation plan, right? No, for a comprehensive land use plan. Oh, comprehensive. Okay. For a review, an update of the comprehensive land use plan. Their last one was in, our last one was in 20, was in the year 2000, and this one is a 2020 plan. So, that will be coming up. So, lots of comprehensive plan reviews coming up. Villages counties and frankly the township is probably old enough that they looked at 
again, we might bring that up tomorrow night. Just <coughs> see, if the, see if the response from the Zoning Commission. That reminds me, we are having a special meeting that has been uh, publicized. Uh, the business. <laughs> it's been, oh, wait a minute. Hold the phone. We can't go to new business. We've got to go to uh, all the other stuff. I have, uh, in the spirit of regional planning, but mm -hmm. it really doesn't fit the specific commission I'm on, I've been to two programs. That MVRPC, MVRPC, whatever, and uh, Miami Conservancy District co-sponsored mm -hmm. uh, one I mentioned before on drainage, uh, and then last week uh, it was on drainage in part, but the title was nutrient runoff issues, mm -hmm. uh, and. And although we do not have uh, drainage responsibility, Ohio doesn't really have one agency uh, for local areas. There's, this, there's a soil water conservation district. There are different drainage districts that have to do with specific ditches. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've just made it a, a concern uh, with it increase in so-called uh, heavy, well there's another name, but the heavy rains, there, there are more in, intense rains, mm -hmm. it's becoming more of an issue and it has to do with land use, it has to do with mm -hmm. uh, farming practices, uh, it affects our roads and the immediate drainage around our roads, uh, and I don't know when, but I, I suspect in the some time over the next 10 years, there will be some state laws changing, uh, trying to have more uh, planned control over uh, drainage patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, but I found these really well done. Uh, the, who was the environmental guy for MPRPC? Matt Lindsay, I think. Yes, mm -hmm. he's really good. Mm -hmm. And they're well attended. Uh, very well. Okay. Enough said. Interesting. Um, I'd like to back up just for one second to fiscal officer. I forgot to mention. Uh, there's a in your accounting system. There's a thirty dollar check that was made out to the village of Yellow Springs for a deposit on the Bryan Center gymnasium when we use that. Yeah. And I just told him to go ahead and rip it up, as opposed to because was, well they don't they don't we they would, they would they would return it if there was no damage. Yeah. It was ripped up. Yeah. Somebody ripped it up. Oh, I. She offered to either mail it back to us or rip it up, or I could come and get it. Uh, well, I, I probably need to avoid it in the system, or else it's going to be considered uncashed for, and I have to save it for five years. That's what I'm telling you about. Okay. All right. <laughs> back to... Uh, yeah. A $30 check. Back to old business. Okay. Or new oh, business. Boy. Standing committee was for Standing committee. Yeah. How's about... Cool. You can even the cemetery. Any no actual report? No report? Um, no new chip seal there yet. Any census committee work? Uh, nothing worth mentioning. No. Okay. Uh, I brought up the YSCDCC and what's going on there with the uh, the bylaws and soon to be 501c3 application. Um, I didn't stop at the mill yesterday. There were people there, so I didn't go in. Under new business, I thought this was interesting. If anyone heard that our county prosecutor has decided not to run for re-election. Really? In next year. Oh. And so he doesn't <coughs> want to run against Alice DeWine. Our former 
He said, he said it was family thing in the paper. Our former assistant county prosecutor, Alice DeWine, uh, has announced that she will be running for the office. Oh. Really? Mm -hmm. That's why she left working for Green County. Mm -hmm. We don't need to go into that. No. Well, right. she, that didn't even... well, we don't know who else might run. Oh, okay. Um, wow. And those, the filing deadline is not. Yeah, it's, is it January? No, oh, it's December, December, second week of December 1st. It was the first week and it's just changed because they moved to the primary. Maybe they'll run. Maybe they'll run. So we'll also go first. <laughs> um, the only, the last thing that I had was I wanted to just quickly, because we haven't really done this yet, gone over who the, who the winning bidders were for the project for the, uh, Firehouse, we do know that JCAR, because we've talked about that, uh, they will be doing uh, the, the general work and labor in addition to the overhead doors now and the electrical work. But the, uh, the plumbing work was awarded to Fredco Industrial Piping in Miamisburg uh, with a total amount of $349,913. The mechanical work. Do you want me to put this in the minutes? No, it's not okay. necessary. We'll probably hear all these. Uh, the mechanical work was awarded to uh, Hawk Brothers of Springfield in um, a total of four hundred six thousand dollars. Data communication uh, it was awarded to Fischel Companies, Fischel Company of Cincinnati. Um, in the amount of one hundred fifty-three thousand seven hundred twenty-two dollars and fifty-one cents. And last but not least, well, we did talk about them. The bid package for the site work was uh, given to Fillmore Construction, Leesburg, Ohio, uh, in the total amount of five hundred and forty-five thousand one hundred ninety-six dollars. That's at the base for the work contract. Oh no, the general contractor is, uh, is, is going to be way over three million, three million seven, I think the total is. It all adds up to uh, about four million nine hundred and seventy thousand dollars, which is under the maximum uh, uh, contractors. Uh, Estimate, the building estimate. All right. Any other business before us this evening? Reminder, reminder the pre construction business, pre construction meeting is um, 9 30 Wednesday morning. It's here. I really don't know what goes on, but we go and find out. So, I would move for an adjournment. I so move. Moved and seconded and, and by third edition. Thirded? Yeah.